Hey everybody, welcome to the movie show. I am Zach and this is Brent and this is Bobby and this is Jesse and we're going to be talking about the Netflix original show Dirty Money, episode one, Hard Knocks. Uh, so this is directed by Alex Gibney. This is a 75 minute uh, documentary and uh, it is about the VW diesel scandal. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't seen it yet, I mean, I don't think we're revealing any secrets here, but you should just stop here, go watch it, because I think we all recommend it, right? Yeah, and, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, we're going to put our average rating here so you can see if you think it's worth seeing. It, it is worth seeing. I think yeah, we yeah. can all agree on right. that. So let's just jump in to it. But before we do, guys, I just want to take a quick break. Uh, I want to pitch you guys an idea that I came up with. This is a thriller. Okay. Uh, this is about right. a multinational car company. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm going to pitch this to Netflix, in fact. So uh, I want to get your thoughts. So it's a multinational car company. Okay. They decided to uh, cheat and, and put a what's called a defeat device in their car, which will make it so that the emissions coming out of the car look clean when it's being tested, mm. but when it's on the road, it's dirty. Mm. Okay. And uh, they, they basically get away with this for years. All right, Zach, this sounds a little bit uh, far-fetched. I mean, yeah, I don't I think this would that. actually happen in real life. So mm. It's not quite believable enough. What if you test it on monkeys? That, that could make it... Because so the company tests their cars on monkeys to yeah. show that it's safe? Yeah, you no. put them in a box and you... Yeah. That's too... I mean, it, that's too much, I would think. Too much? I don't know. What if they want to do it on people, too, though? Would that make it better? Wait, that's, so... That's, again, that's like so, evil that's corporate. No, I like what you're, so I think what you're talking about. But that's right like James though. Bond intrigue, evil. No. This is intrigue. People like intrigue. <laughs> no, all right, all right. Well, they would do that. They'd have to make some kind of fake testing company... Then they'd have to. Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, how are we going to write that, that in much. rent? That's okay, well, and in probably. the movie, they finally get caught by some good doer, you know, like in Washington, okay. and so um, now they have to cover up what they did. Um, mm. And so instead of coming clean, they just keep going. They, they, they you know, they cover it up, and then they they get caught. But then they blame it on just a bunch of like software engineers, so that all the higher level guys can go free. Okay, like, what, what this, do you think? this would never happen. This is a sci-fi movie. I mean, this the whole point. company would go under. Yeah, I know. I was, I was trying to make it like exciting, but yeah. it doesn't. I mean, we have to make it realistic. I right. mean, the company would cease to exist after. Right, true. Hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, this what, is a really what, good idea. What, what, what if you got like in the movie, you got one of the guys who's a high-level executive, like the head of engineering, and you get a deposition, so you've got him on tape, and he's kind of like laughingly admitting to everything. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Like. You, you, would that be believable? Uh, I feel like that totally doesn't match the rest no. of the movie, though. Now it's like a comedy or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of weird. weird is this at this point? I know. I, 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 I kind of wish it was already a thing so we could just watch it because yeah. I wonder. I, I don't know how it would turn out. I yeah. mean, yeah. Do you see where we're going with this, guys? <laughs> this actually happened. I think <laughs> as I watched it, I was just getting so angry. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all wanted to bring pitchforks with us this afternoon. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that was just. All right, so let's let's dive into it. What was the part of the movie that you guys were like? Because we've all been talking about the VW sc scandal on this show. It feels like we've been talking about it from the start. Right. Like, this has been going on for a long time. <laughs> where was it in, in this where you were like, wait a minute, I am i didn't know about this. Was there any part of the scandal that you guys didn't know about? I mean, I heard about it in the news a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't necessarily anything I didn't know about the the thing that kind of took me was the fact that they were deliberately like everyone the executives knew that they were doing this because right. i thought maybe like i gave them the benefit of the doubt just like uh carb mm -hmm. and i said to myself like oh it must have been a mistake someone in software screwed something up mm -hmm. but then when you find out that this is like something they were doing on purpose to try and cover their tracks i was like wow the fact that this company can get away with this. They think yeah. they're above the law with yeah, like this. I think the most surprising thing is how deep it actually went. Yeah. You think maybe like, oh, when I first heard the story, like, oh, they installed something to try to cheat a little bit and they got caught. That's the end of the story. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, well, then they, all the stuff of them trying to cover their tracks and trying to do more cheating and creating all right. this stuff yeah. to like cover. That was the part that was really surprising. I think for me, it was learning just how dirty these engines were running. And then the impact that it had, the fact that in, uh, I forget if it was just Germany or, or Europe as a whole, that there are 10,000 premature deaths per year. Mm. And so the whole time this company is, is sort of too big to fail, especially in Germany, because it's 
uh, and employ 600,000 people. But it's like, in 60 years, you would have killed that many people. <laughs> wow. Just in Europe. I mean, and right. that's j just in Europe. Right. You know, that's not counting um, America. That's not counting the rest of the world. Just in Europe, you would have killed the number of people that work in your factories. That's a good point. And you're, you know, that's insane. Uh, what caught me was how easily this could have not been caught. Um, so, I mean, there was this guy, John German, who runs the International Council on Regulation, right? And his group did some tests. And they found this out, and he even was afraid. He, he immediately knew, like, oh, crap, I'm going up against VW. I cannot publish the name of this company. So he did a, an, you know, a, a conference where he published some results, but it was car A, B, and C. And he let VW know, like, your car, that's your car. And if it weren't for him, it sounded like, having done the initial testing, I don't think CARB would have gotten involved. And that's what really shocked me. It's like, I thought there was just armies of regulators checking everything. Mm -hmm. Turns out... They just take your, oh, you, VW, say your car's clean? Great. And Carb didn't even know that they didn't really want to believe that there was something no. wrong. Because you want right. to trust someone like that. I, I right? think if it weren't for that Carb guy, I forget his name if I have yeah, it in my notes. Uh, I'll have to find it at some point. We'll put it up here. Um, if it weren't for that Carb guy really like digging in his heels and being like, no, we're going to have to check it again. We're going to have to check it again. Because each time VW was like, no, you must have your data wrong. You know, we'll send a team over and we'll have meetings, endless meetings. And the guy was like, yeah, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed here because we're having all these meetings and no, I'm not getting any answers. You can see how that would be like, I'm, we must be wrong, guys. Mm -hmm. our, our equipment must be wrongly calibrated. Mm. And I loved how VW did their own tests mm. and set them and were like, yeah, I mean, we did the tests and look, this is our data. They just lied about the data or they, right. they fixed it. And it's like. How do you do that? And then, like, they're really gambling because they're basically betting on the fact that CARB is going to be like, oh, well, you know what? We must have been wrong and then move along. But luckily, like, the guy who was running that operation at CARB was smart enough to do his own tests again and proved again that they were cheating again. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. When uh, the guy tried to test in Germany the cars, remember, the four major testing companies were all like, no, you cannot use our company. Yeah. Right? He had to go to Switzerland to just test the damn German cars. Right. Yeah. That tells you something about the cover-up and how insidious it is throughout the entire country. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been covering the whole Tesla supercharger problem in Germany, and it turns out the, gar the government in Germany doesn't want Tesla there. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, I mean, they're one of their major... I don't think we understand this as Americans. The German car manufacturing is a huge part of their economy. Yeah. Right. And they it's are... a huge part of their identity as yeah. a country. German you know? engineering. Another thing that shocked me, I don't know if it shocked you guys, was I thought that the diesel emissions was like 7% over the allowable amount. Like, we just need to squeeze right. it down just a little bit and we'll yeah. have it. It was sometimes 40 to 80 times over the amount. It's just right. like... Not it's night and day, and it, mm -hmm. it's insane. Like I mean, it's that, that commercial with the old ladies and the one in the back seat is like, Louise, your car's dirty, <laughs> and then she goes out with her scarf and she puts it over the mm -hmm. exhaust and it comes back clean. And I'm just like, that's just because you weren't turning the wheel. As soon as you go to turn the wheel, like, and that's insidious because if you think about it, in your driveway, it will be clean. Yeah, it's right. insidiously clever. Like mm -hmm. they just found a way to to trick people, and I think that's so bad for the company. It's like. Why wouldn't you just say, like, it's not as clean as it we'd like it to be, but we're working, working on it. It's like... Well, why go down why? the diesel route at be, all? I don't I know. know. That's where I kind of don't understand. Like, we have cars that run on gasoline that are already fairly clean. Why did they jump on the diesel train? And then why? Well, so there, there's a couple reasons why it appeals to consumers. One is that it's uh, a little bit more fuel efficient. You don't have to buy as much diesel to go quite as far because it's it's a you know more powerful fuel than gasoline. Um, it burns a little bit less CO two. So, for if you're selling to environmentalists, you can you can claim that it's you know not causing as much global warming. Uh, and and the fuel itself is less refined, right? So it takes a couple less steps to make it, which is supposedly why it's cheaper. Right. Um, and so I guess you could claim because it's not as refined, you're not using as much energy to make it. Right. And so the making of these smaller diesel engines, I guess, was, 
don't know, pivotal in, 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 in the beginning, we, we learned why people bought those cars. It's because they were fun to drive. It's because they claimed they were clean. They're better for the environment than other cars. And I forget what the third reason was. They represented like the peace movement or something. Right. I mean, I don't know. So it was just sort of a big marketing thing towards people who wanted a fun car to drive, but also wanted to feel good driving it. When the company gets caught, and we get into that whole section of it, I love the uh, depositions of Stuart Johnson, who is the head of engineering. And there's a couple times where his lawyer is like, you don't have to answer that. And he's like, I'm going to answer it. It was like a little grin, yeah. kind of like, I don't know. And I couldn't get the sense of it. I want your opinion. Was he like, I'm so glad to get this off my chest? Or was he like, just a company guy and I was reading too much into it? Like, do you feel like mm -hmm. he was... Because he, he obviously, let's come on, people, he knew. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I think he knew. I think he feel, felt like he was kind of fooled by his company. Mm -hmm. And I think he felt innocent. I don't know if he truly was innocent, but I think from his perspective, he feels like he was tricked. Because um, I think he was also giving the executives the benefit of the doubt and saying, mm -hmm. like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Because if you work for that company, I think you would want it to be, to be a, right. a, like a fluke. But, well, I mean, that's what he claims during right. the entire deposition, but you kind of get the sense that he's just in the know and he's just kind of covering, covering himself. Up. Yeah. I, I do want to point out that, like, if you run a company with 600,000 employees and their argument, the upper levels of VAW's argument is, oh, it was just a couple software guys. We had no idea they were doing this. Rogue software guys, mm. which is, by the way, a new Star Wars movie. <laughs> um, that's not possible, people. It doesn't work like that. And, in fact, one of the heads of VW Advertising said at one point, if you want a pencil at VW, you need three guys to sign off mm -hmm. on it. Like, that's how German companies work. They're very risk averse. Mm. And so everything gets talked about all the time. So to argue that like, we didn't know this was going on is not credible, mm -hmm. that everybody knew. And in fact, a bunch of people who've worked for the company and press in Germany said that everybody knew, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. It was just a giant, giant cover up. What made it the, just over the top worse to me, was the EUGT, which was this fake uh, research group that I guess Mercedes, BMW, VW all got behind to fund, which was supposed to, I don't really know why this idea sounded good when they came up with it, but basically yeah. I guess it was supposed to be like, let's prove that diesel's clean once and for all. Yes. So let's hire this Lovelace Institute in New Mexico. They will do some studies on monkeys to prove that it's clean. And the monkey testing was bad enough. Like mm -hmm. that just was... Horrible. I'm glad they showed some monkeys so you could actually visualize what they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, putting monkeys into a chamber, pumping this, you know, polluted Exhaust air fumes, right. for them to breathe for hours, and then testing their blood. But then someone had the bright idea, you know what, let's go, let's go even further, guys. Let's do it on humans. Right. <laughs> what? Mm. And I don't, I don't understand, were they hoping that would never come out, that they tested it on humans? I, I would assume that they were doing doing this test so that the test results would come out and show, oh, look at this. <laughs> it's okay. Cars don't, you know, the, the diesel isn't going to kill you. But first of all, I want to point out that the test is bogus. Right. I mean, putting someone in a room and exposing them to... For four hours. Of for four hours of, of exposure is not the same as, like, living next to a street. Or you don't even need to live next to a street, as they pointed out later in the movie. You just need to sort of be somewhere in the general area right. where a bunch of people drive these dirty diesel cars. Right, because this stuff is carried by, you know, climb, uh, by weather patterns to your house. Right, it's just in the atmosphere, and it's what creates smog and, and stuff like that, and you're going to have lots of respiratory health issues, and it's terrible. And so, I mean, putting them in a chamber for four hours and being like, see, this guy's healthy. It's like, what are you proving? The other thing is that I thought at the end of this, well, thank God they got caught, uh, $25 billion in fines, this will never happen again. Lo and behold, the documentary points out that in Europe, this is still allowed because as long as you can show that you're damaging the engine by lowering the emissions, you can continue doing it. So if it hurts the engine, then oh no, no, let, mm -hmm. let it out the tailpipe. And it was like, are you crazy? Like, right. the, what? So you wrote a law specifically to allow it to keep happening, basically. So nothing's changed, people. Yeah. Like, nothing's changed. If you forget about this, if you give VW a pass, then nothing changed. Right. That's why we don't give them a pass on the show. 
because they have not admitted anything. Mm -hmm. They maybe did it in a legal, you know, in a, in a but courtroom. They were forced to. They, they basically right. had to or else they, they couldn't sell cars. They signed a right. settlement agreement, but they didn't say, we're going to change the culture of our company. They just basically said, oh, we took a risk. We have to pay the $25 billion. But let me point out, they're the largest car manufacturer in the world. So they took a risk. They took a hit. But that didn't put them out of business, did it? No. They're still they're still around. So obviously it worked for them. Right. I think the thing that frustrates at least me and, and I know a lot of people is that this whole the whole scenario, this whole thing is just a big cost benefit analysis for yes. them. They just have this equation set up where it's like money at the end, how much money can we get? Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of variables of like where we're going to lose money, mm -hmm. you know, and, and usually it's like, oh, the building of the cars and the buying of the materials and the this and the that. But then there's like regulatory costs for when we lied and mm -hmm. swindled people. <laughs> and, yeah. and then they're like, well, which would be worse if we didn't sell cars in America or if we come clean? Oh, at that point, that's when we're going to come clean? It's like, seriously? Right. I mean, it's not like... It, and I think another thing they, they cover in this is that at no point was anyone saying, like, should we be doing this? Right. No one said, you know, we should, we should come clean. That's the culture of, of giant corporations is there's no way for one person to go, guys, stop. That the, the person you put in charge of the company, the CEO, is someone you put in place. He's a guy you know will go along with the, the company line. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that whole top leadership is stuck mm -hmm. doing what you want. And any guy down below that says anything is gone. Right. So there's no way to change that ship. That that ship is not going to turn around. Right. And it's all about the culture. I mean, so the it was the CEO for a very long time who, you know, started when VW was sort of down and out as a company and then turned it around through, you know, it seemed like being really mean. <laughs> um, and like maniacal looking and scary um yeah, it was like, like oh, we're going yes. to like you, there's only one victor and we will be it was like okay 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 like, relax um so you know you start off with that and then everyone who comes after him is like okay i need to follow in his footsteps i need to make this company more profitable i want to be the biggest comp the biggest car company then they pose this in the movie it's it's like you know do you become the biggest car company like why? Like why do this? Why do right. any? Well, of no. This? They, I mean, they had the the company wanted to be number one. That's it. Right. I mean, that's all they had in their head was to become number one. And if that's the only metric of number one in sales, right. you'll do anything. Right. And in fact, at one point, they asked Stuart um, Johnson. They said, "Is this guy like? Does all he care about is sales?" And his lawyer said, "You don't have to answer that." And he's like, "Yeah, that's all he cares about." Right. Like that's all they care about. I also want to point out that one of the only reasons we have stopped this company from doing this for the moment is because of the states. Um, as we heard from Eric Schneiderman, who's the Attorney General of New York, it was states that actually brought lawsuits against VW, and that pushed the federal government. And so if it hadn't been for the small guys, the states who mm -hmm. did this, well, VW would probably still be doing it. Right. And we would just sort of have some little clause in our law that was like, oh, but it would damage the engine, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and if it this is VW, so American states and gov and U.S. federal government has a reason to kind of stop them, right? They're a foreign car company. Mm -hmm. uh, GM does it. Mm -hmm. uh, Chrysler did it when they were an all American company. They put uh, defeat devices. These aren't new like German in inventions. Defeat mm -hmm. devices have been around, as they implied in the documentary. They've been around for a long time. Right. Um, and what happens generally is when you find them, uh, you give a slap on the wrist to GM and say, no, no, no. And then no one hears about it. And right. if they do, it's like, oh, it was just on this one model year. No, they, they're, all, they're there all the time. Right. There's no way you can burn diesel and make it clean. So they basically, the execs, like, calculate the risk into the cost and say, like Jesse was saying, oh, this is worth it. I mean, even if we get caught, yeah. it's a slap on the wrist. It's yeah, worth and we'll it. throw, you know, Bobby, the VP of engineering, under the bus and he'll go to prison. Right. Like, yeah. We'll be fine because we'll just claim we didn't know anything about it mm -hmm. yeah wow and the other thing is jurisdiction i mean if you're not in the u.s they can't put you in jail right so i mean they had to wait until like uh, oliver schmidt was in the country to to nab him but a lot of the germans we don't have jurisdiction over so as long as they don't come back to this country we can't put them 
you know, into a deposition. We can't find out what happened. All right, it's time for quick uh, ratings from each of our panel. And so we'll start with Jesse. And remember, we, we rate this on one to five. It does not have to be stars. Jesse, what do you rate this documentary? I'm going to give it a five out of five pitchforks. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it four out of five uh, monkeys. Because four, four monkeys. I thought it was really good. I liked it a lot. It kind of intrigued me to watch the rest of the show. I'm going to go 4.5 out of 5 weird southern lawyers. Not to declare. <laughs> I love that guy's voice. Yeah, you he, had the, he had the best that. voice when he came out of I'm like, this guy's awesome. Yeah, I really liked it a lot too. My, I guess one really minor, minor quibble is there was a couple parts where I felt like it got a little slow. That yep. maybe they could have tightened it up a little bit to mm -hmm. an hour. But other than that, I think it's really great. Everyone should watch it. And yep, like Bobby said, curious to see the rest of the show. I'm going to give it 4.5 as well. I, I agree with Brent. It, uh, uh, all the information was fantastic. It did start a little bit slow, and I had trouble getting into it for a couple minutes because I was like, is this the pace the whole thing is going to be at? Mm -hmm. um, but then once you get into it, you're really into it. And I guess for my rating... You need some torches from a pitchfork. <laughs> oh, that's true. I'll torches. All right, I'll go torches. Yeah, Let, let's let's burn this down. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, we'd love to get your comments below. We're going to be reviewing lots more cool movies like this, so please let us know any that you've seen or you want us to see. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Now you know. Now you know.